Hello and welcome to another of our readings from Ancient Greek Drama by me, Professor Michael Scott. It's a great pleasure to see you here. Today we are moving to one of my favourite of all the Ancient Greek tragedies by Euripides, Euripides Medea. Now this wasn't in ancient times a particular success. In fact, we think Euripides came third in the annual dramatic festival competition at which these tragedies were being performed. But it's really a play that has come into its own for us in the modern world because it's such a strong statement by a lead female character uh, about the wrongs done to her by the world around her and the very dramatic action that she will take in return. It was performed for the first time in 431 BCE and the story runs like this. Jason, famously of Jason and the Argonauts, had enlisted the help of a woman in that part of the world called Medea to enable him to succeed in his quest and as a result had brought her back to Greece as his bride. They had lived happily, they had had children. But they are now living in Corinth and the king of Corinth has suggested that Jason actually ditch Medea and marry his daughter instead. Jason has decided to do this and spends the first part of the play sort of justifying his decision to abandon Medea and his children uh, and to continue forward in uh, his new course. Medea is left having to decide what to do uh, and she begins by being extremely angry of course. Then you see her plot a out, an exile, a place that she could go safely in exile whatever she does in the meantime. And then we've seen her plot to kill Jason's new bride by sending her a gift, a uh, dress to put on which is actually poisoned. And now we see her move to make a final decision on whether to enact the most difficult and extreme part of her revenge. That is, she is going to kill her own children in order to deny Jason that joy of being a father looked after by his own children in his old age. And in this speech, we see Medea tussling with herself about whether to go forward with this final act. My children, my children, you have a city and a home in which, leaving your poor mother behind, you will live henceforth bereft of me. But I shall go to another land as an exile before I have the enjoyment of you and see you happy, before I have tended to your baths and wives and marriage beds and held the wedding torches aloft. How wretched my self-will has made me. It was all in vain, I see that I brought you up. All in vain that I laboured and was racked with toils, enduring the harsh pains in childbirth. Truly, many were the hopes that I had, poor fool, once had in you, that you would tend me in my old age, and when I die, dress me for burial with your own hands. An enviable fate for mortals. But now this sweet imagining has perished. For bereft of you, I shall live out my life in pain and in grief. And you will no longer see your mother with loving eyes, but pass into another manner of life. Oh, what is the meaning of your glance at me, my children? Why do you smile at me? This smile of yours, alas, what am I to do? My courage is gone, women. Ever since I saw the bright faces of the children, I cannot do it. Farewell, my former designs. I shall take my children out of the land. Why should I wound their father with their pain and win for myself pain twice as great? I shall not. Farewell, my designs. But what is coming over me? Do I wish to suffer mockery, letting my enemies go unpunished? Must I put up with that? No. It is mere weakness in me even to admit such tender words into my heart. Children, go into the house. Whoever is not permitted to attend my sacrifice shall feel concern for them. I shall not weaken my hand. My angry heart, do not do these things. Let them go. And hearted wretch, spare the children. If they live with me in that other place, they will gladden you. 
Oh, by hell's avenging furies, I shall never leave my children for my enemies to outrage. They must die in any case, and since they must, the one who gave them birth shall kill them. These things are settled in any case and cannot be undone. Already the crown is on her head. The royal bride is perishing in the robe, I know it well. But since I now go down the road of greatest misery and send these down one unhappier yet, I want to say farewell to my children. Give me your right hands to kiss my children, give them to me. Oh, hands and lips so dear to me, oh, noble face and bearing of my children. I wish you happiness. But in that other place, what is here, your father has taken away. Oh, how sweet is the touch, how tender the skin, how fragrant the breath of these children. Go in, go in, go in. I can no longer look at you, but I'm overwhelmed with my pain. And I know well what pain I am about to undergo. My wrath overbears my calculation. Wrath that brings mortal men their gravest hurt. <laughs>